welcome once again to another episode of the Guy Block Podcast. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about, well, post show backlash. So I just finished watching WWE Backlash, and I just wanted to give you my thoughts on the card as a whole, how everything went, and um, why I believe this was a highly successful show for SmackDown and for the WWE. So we're just going to get right into it. Let's start off with what surprised me. I did not watch the kickoff match. I came in at the beginning of the show, was doing some things, and couldn't um, watch the kickoff. Which I'm a bit annoyed at because I'm a huge Ty Dillinger fan. Very big Ty Dillinger fan. So I'm a little pissed off that um, I came in late. You know, and I missed this match altogether. I actually came in right after the Shinsuke Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler match started. But, you know, it is what it is. And it is on the network, so I'll go back and watch that match at a later time. Now, having said that, I believe that the Shinsuke Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler match was an excellent match. It was perfect in the sense of People hate a lot on Dolph Ziggler for obvious reasons. A little bit of who he is and, you know, he can be a little bit too much in times. He can be annoying and the fact that he's allowed himself, in a sense, not completely his responsibility, but partly he's allowed himself to be put down to almost jobber status, does annoy people because he is clearly one of the most talented superstars on the WWE roster. Having said that, I'm, I, was, I, w- I thought basically that Dolph Ziggler was the perfect first opponent for Shinsuke Nakamura. Dolph Ziggler is a triple A talent in the ring. He always looks good. He, everything he does looks great. But his biggest talent of all is a talent that not a lot of wrestlers have, which is he's got the skill of making anybody that he steps into that ring with look like the best version of themselves and when you have a talent like Shinsuke Nakamura that a lot of us hardcore fans know who he is a lot of us followed him on NXT at the very least and some knew him from before but that the general you know WWE universe might not know who this guy is this was a great introduction Ziggler was the perfect guy for the job, and he delivered. It was a great match, a lot of, you know, close calls, a lot of, you know, almost finishers or finishers that they kicked out of, but it was just overall a great, great match. And, you know, I can't say anything negative about it. I loved it. It was a great match. It was entertaining, and the world now knows who Shinsuke Nakamura is, and what Shinsuke Nakamura is capable of. So that's a win, win, win. A win for the fans, a win for WWE, and a win for Shinsuke Nakamura. The only guy losing, as always, is Dolph. But, you know, it's a role that he see, it seems he's accepted now to be that person that's there, kind of like the big show, to help new superstars shine. And... You know, if he's happy doing that, I'm sure he'd love to be a champion again. And with this new WWE, you never know. That time might come again. In the meanwhile, he's playing his role as best as he can, which is pretty damn great. So while I hate the fact, just like most people, that he is not a bigger star, I'm just happy that he's at least there to make sure that people like Shinsuke get the proper recognition they deserve. Awesome match, Shinsuke won as he should have, and you know, no hate for me on that match. Moving on, we had the tag team match for the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Usos versus Breezango, great match. And you know, the Usos as heels have really grown They've changed their the perception about them. They've really been able to do something great 
as far as showing a little bit more personality with a bit more of an edge and to show that there's a new version of them, a rebirth, if you will. So that's been great. They've been uh, really entertaining on the mic. And as always, great wrestlers. They always do a great job in the ring. What's really been amazing in the past few weeks is the rebirth of Brizango. Two superstars that were barely used as fillers before. And now all of a sudden, they are going for the championship. And not only are they in a championship match, but with a real opportunity to win. This match played out perfectly. It looked great. It was a great showcase match. And it was a great match that showed that Breezango, comedy and all, can still be a believable championship caliber team. They hung in there with the Usos. They had a great match. Everything looked great until the end. And while they were beat semi-clean, there's nothing to take away negatively from this. Just positives about the fact that this is Breezango starting to get a push. So, Fashion Police and the Fashion Files... I, I'm just looking forward to the next one, and I'm very happy. I'm happy, you know, Fandango, I've never been a huge fan of him, but I'm a, a great, I'm a big fan of Tyler Breeze. I believe he's been mishandled since he came up to, to the main roster, and just to see him getting this opportunity, I'm just happy, you know, with Fandango for really gelling with him and going all in and doing something that's becoming special. So that's great. No knock on them for losing. It's okay. This could have gone either way. No, nothing off my back, you know, um, with the Usos keeping the title. Just the fact that, that Brizango looked like a believable tag team contender, title contenders, was more than enough in the fact that they're getting built up in the universe the right way. So that was great. That was really, really fun to watch. Now, surprise, let's move on to the next match, which was my surprise finish of the evening. Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. I don't know what's going on with Baron Corbin. I believe that he has a very bright future in WWE. He's their type of guy. Um, he, he just looks apart. He looks badass. He's tall. He's got the pedigree. And he just... He just fucking, he looks like, I'm sorry, I apologize for cursing, but he looks like a freaking monster. And I don't mean like Bray Wyatt monster, but I mean like a believable ass kicker. You know, the same way that you might have thought, and not bla being blasphemous, guys, but the re the same way that you, if you stood next to Stone Cold, you say, I would never mess with this guy because he could kick my ass, and I don't think that he would hesitate to kick my ass. That's the exact same way that the type of feeling or vibe that I get from Baron Corbin. And they've been using him and building him up in one of the best ways. He's looked great. He's picking up everything pretty quickly. So it's been fun. Um, but it has been surprising that he's been racking up some losses. Now, this could be due to a lot of reasons. I mean, and, and the fact I thought he was going to win tonight. Sami Zayn is more of the lovable loser. But the fact that Sami Zayn won, Baron Corbin loses again, had me thinking that maybe it just has to do with the fact that maybe Baron Corbin is being tested. They love to do this in the WWE with their guys. Excuse me. <clears throat> but they love to test them. See, you know, after a few losses or a month or two of losing, how do they handle it? How do they react to it? And that tells them a lot of, you know, in the long term, what we will do with this kid. So, let's see. I believe Baron Corbin has a bright future in WWE. I believe that, you know, he'll be one of the great heels and maybe, you know, one of those anti-heroes that becomes a babyface when that comes around again. But I believe that, that, you know, there's something there, something big that one day will blow up. And, you know, that day isn't today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow. Um, him losing this match is not the biggest deal. But I was surprised. But hey, it is what it is. 
It was still a great match. He still looks like he's getting better and better. So, all kudos. I mean, just the fact it was not a bad match. It was a good match overall. Um, so, I was happy with that. If you guys feel different, let me know. But those are my thoughts on that match. Um, we're going to keep it rolling. Let's talk about the six-woman tag team match, which I am not a fan of. This would be the one match that I was kind of like, eh, why? I mean, on the kickoff show, they had one match. Couldn't they split these ladies up and had two matches for the women's division? I'm just never a fan when the women's division is basically taken and um, their whole representation on the show is one match. And I find it even worse when to say, well, we had six women on the show. Yeah, if all six are on one match, it's not a great deal. Now, if you tell me you had three women's matches or you had two women's matches and six to eight women got to participate, great. But if you're telling me they only got one match, I mean, if it's two women, that's great because at least you're trusting just two women to really carry that mantle. But beyond that, when it's two, when it's two on each side, so four, six, eight, ten, which they have done in the past. I start getting a little bit like eh, disinterested, not because of the women, but because of how they're being projected. It's not a great look when you say, oh, we love the women. We're all about the women's revolution. Here's one match with all six of them. That's just ridiculous. The match was decent. It was a good match. Um, but I got to say, I kind of zoned out on it. Um, you know, Naomi's always great, as is Charlotte, as is Becky. Natalia, I I gotta say I'm tired of her. She's always in this position. She's always upper mid card. She hasn't changed much, and you make her a heel and you make her a baby face, but it's always the same Natalia. So it's kind of boring to me. And when I say kind of boring, I'm sorry. Natalia bores me, and I love her pedigree. I love where she's from, but I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing Natalia doing the same thing. I'm tired of seeing Natalia using the same moves. And I'm tired of seeing Natalia coming out to the same music. Using one of the greatest superstars of all time to build her up. She's better than that. Why is she still with the Bret Hart music? I don't get it. And I know it's not his exact music, but it is. It is. It's meant to remind you that she's part of Bret Hart. She's her, his niece. She's part of the family. We all know this. She should have her own music by now. She should have changed, you know, the the new music team that the WWE has could come up with something awesome for her. But she just has, ugh, she doesn't change. It's annoying. It's annoying to me. Especially when you have talent like Carmella right there. You have um, Tamina. Her wrestling is weak. I don't know why after so many years it's still weak. I know she come back from injury, but... She wasn't a great wrestler before. She's not a great wrestler now. So she's another one that, that bothers me a little bit. But you do have Becky Lynch. You do have Charlotte Flair. You do have Carmella. You have new talent. Yet, in the main event picture for the women, you can't seem to freaking get Natalia out of there. And it's a little bit annoying. Same music. Same look. Pink here. Pink there. I'm a heart. I'm a heart. I'm a heart. She can be a baby face or a heel. I am tired of it. And it just bothers me from the point of view of she could be better. She should be doing something else. She should be doing something different. That's my thought. Plain and simple. It doesn't have to do with, like, get rid of Natalia. It just rebirth is my thing. She needs to redo everything. It's I don't know. Maybe you guys disagree with me. Let me know. Moving forward to better matches... Um, KO versus AJ Styles. Match that could steal the night. Match that stole the night. It's what we expected. It's an amazing match. Great ring psychology. Fun to watch. Really entertaining. Going back and forth. These two guys, these two guys should really keep on fighting for the next three months. Next three pay-per-views, I want to see them. Because it's just, they get it. And they have such great ring psychology that I feel that this match could be the tip of the iceberg. And this could be a really, really great rivalry. So I hope they keep going with it. I believe they will. So, I don't know. 
I don't know. Let me know what you thought, but I was really entertained with this match. And the fact that we got that count-out finish where AJ was stuck on the wires, that was perfect. So AJ doesn't lose any cred, and KO is still an ass and a heel and everything else. It was a great match. Great match all around. And I'm actually happy with the finish. It was it was very well thought out. So no, nothing to complain here. Um, Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. That was a surprisingly good match. Um, I don't know. I just, Luke Harper is, you know, he is one of the best talents that they have. Eric Rowan, for the most part, for what we've seen, is not. Uh, but he really pulled his weight in this match. They look great. They seem to have good chemistry. Um, everything leading to this match would have had you believe that maybe Eric Rowan was due for a win. So I was surprised that Luke Harper won. But I'm not hurt by it. I love Luke Harper. I wish they did more with him. I wish they figured out a new character for him or an evolution for his character. But it was great. And the fact that Eric Rowan's character has actually been evolving, that's also great. So it's, it's fun both ways. It was a good match. Not a great match. Not a triple-A match. But it was a very good match. It was um, fun to watch. And I was surprised that it was definitely better than expected. Now, going on to the main event. The WWE Championship match. This really, I was like looking forward to it. I was really looking forward to this match. A lot of Jinder Mahal haters out there, uh, but I'm not a Randy Orton hater. I'm a big fan of Randy Orton, but I wanted Jinder to win. I'm not going to lie. I wanted Jinder to win. I know, I know, I know if you guys want to like, what the hell? What are you talking about? You're not a real fan. I get it. I get it. But hear me out. Hear why I wanted Jinder to win. I like to think, you know, they're short-term, long-term, but I'm, I'm a fan of storyline. I'm a fan of, of developing storylines and thinking of where things are going and, and just having good TV. You know, I, the matches entertain me, but I like everything around the matches also entertains me. So I'm a WWE fan. This is how I got into wrestling. So sports entertainment to me is about more than just the matches. So it is sports and entertainment. They both matter almost equally. I understand why somebody like Dolph Ziggler hasn't, you know, been where he should be in the main event, in the, you know, main event championship title picture. It's because while being a triple A talent in the ring, his entertainment level has kind of plateaued for now. So I get it. You know, just because he's a great wrestler doesn't mean he should be fighting for the championship. Um, AJ Styles, on the other hand, has both things. KO has both things. So they're they're bound to get into the main event picture. They're mount, bound to always be fighting for titles. And, and more importantly, it's inevitable that they will be in the world championship picture. Having said that, Randy Orton is a great wrestler when he wants to be. Randy Orton is very entertaining when he wants to be. And that, for me, is where the problem lies. Randy Orton can be entertaining with most of his feuds for usually at the beginning of it. He gets interested, and then he doesn't. And he goes on autopilot, on cruise control. And it gets annoying. It gets boring. You know, so looking forward, a guy that's had 13 title reigns and all of that, at least when John Cena wins, and I'm not the biggest John Cena fan, but I do respect him, he gives it his all. He's always trying to be passionate or act passionate, act like he cares, act like beating whoever's in front of him is the biggest and most important thing to him at that time. Not so much with Randy Orton. Randy Orton is an amazing talent that had so much potential and still has so much potential, but you can't keep him interested for more than a month, if that much. So that causes problems for me as a fan because I'm looking to be entertained and Jinder Mahal offers more options. He offers more people to fight with. He offers new feuds 
and he offers the opportunity for new people to get into the main event picture. Randy Orton doesn't. Everybody's going to be kind of the same. Um, it's In most matches and most feuds, you expect him to win with an RKO out of nowhere. And, you know, he's he's it's natural. He's one of the biggest talents and has been for a long time. So it's natural for you to think that he's going to win. But it's annoying. It doesn't stop from being annoying. Having said that, with Jinder, every feud he goes into, you don't know if he will win. You don't know if he will keep the title. You don't know if the Singh brothers will be there to help him or they'll get kicked out, you know, out of the ring. They'll kicked out of, you know, ringside. They'll be there. They'll be effective or not. Like tonight, the match was very fun. It was great. It was. I loved everything. It was executed perfectly. And having Jinder win... The Maharaja was, while unexpected to most, I find to be the right decision. He is the person that should have the title because he makes it more interesting. Maybe not the best wrestler, maybe not the best talker, but he offers more opportunities to other people to come into the main event picture and he makes it more interesting. He makes you care about that title more. Think about it. Jinder versus Randy Orton. With Randy Orton as the champion, people thought, hmm, should Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles be the, you know, the last match of the night? Should that be the main event? The U.S. title. That's crazy. On a card where you have the WWE Championship match, people were thinking KO versus AJ, that's the real, that's the real main event right there. Now... With Jinder, every pay-per-view he's on, he is the main event. Because the reason that people thought he might he shouldn't have been him versus Randy Orton was because everybody figured Randy's gonna win. So why is this the main event? Nothing exciting's gonna happen there. It could be a, a decent match or a great match even. But Randy's gonna win. And that's how you felt with Randy on every match he's going into. But with Jinder, there's always the possibility that he'll lose. There's always the possibility that whoever he's up against can beat him. So all of a sudden you want to see it. Because you want to see who is going to get that WWE Championship. Who's getting it? Is Jinder keeping it? How does he keep it? Did he do it by cheating? Is he able to win clean finally? How is he keeping this title? Meanwhile, you know... Now, all of a sudden, you want to watch that match, that match being the last of the night, every time is interesting. You want to hate the guy, so it's perfect. He's easy to hate. For those that, that are just interested in seeing what's happening to the title, and you have somebody that's going up against them, whether it's AJ, whether it would be even KO, whether it's even Luke Harper, you want to see that match. What if Luke Harper actually becomes the champion? Now, you might think I'm crazy. Luke Harper, well, six weeks ago, people were like, gender? But now the Maharaja is the champion. So you're thinking, well, if he can win the championship like that, why couldn't Luke Harper all of a sudden become a world champion? See? More interesting. So I'm all for it. Maharaja as champion is the best thing. Plus it's best for business. I know you guys hate that phrase. But with them, you know, wanting to get more exposure in India, it's it was the right business move, but it's actually the right entertainment move. So I agree with it. This is the way to go. You know, maybe I'll regret it in a few weeks, but right now I'm perfectly content and happy with Jinder as the champion because it makes everything more interesting. Well, let me know what you guys and gals think. Um, if you think I'm completely wrong, hey, I don't know. Um, like I've told you guys before, listen to other podcasts, something to wrestle with with Bruce Pritchard. Listen to Solomon Monster. He's always awesome. I follow... Um, he always puts up a, um, what is it, you know, thumbs up or th thumbs down on the show, a, a Twitter poll. And um, when I voted on it, because I always do, it was at 59% thumbs up and 41% uh, thumbs down for WWE Backlash. I think that's about right. I would say 65-35, but let's see. I mean, most people seem to have enjoyed this show, and those that didn't like who won in the end well you're not always gonna like who won who wins the match but was it entertaining and this was 
So I hope to hear from you guys and gals. You know, send me a message. Orlando at theguyblog.com, at theguyblog on Twitter, at theguyblog on Instagram, at theguyblog everywhere. Let me know what you think. And as always, talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thank you.